walking it's itself. Walking. This is a dog that can take itself for a walk. But it still doesn't work. We literally didn't know is it a fail. Please finish it. What happened to it? I want to see it. Oh, true. Hi everyone, my name is Kelsey. And my name is Becky. And we are the Sorry Girls. And we're doing that video again. Ooh, that awkward video where we admit what our DIY fails were. I think it comes along with being a good DIYer as being an honest person. Oh, true. And I like that. Um, so we went to our Instagram. If you are not following us, please follow us at the Sorry Girls so you can be part of fun things like this. And we asked you guys to tell us what DIYs you think we could have done better. Yeah, and we had some own, our own personal thoughts. thoughts as well. So I think let's just get right into it with the first one that you guys already know is coming. Yeah, the stump. All right, so we are back with the West Elm stump side table. You guys knew this would be in this video because I told you I wanted to wait and I still wanted to finish it. So here we are today. And a lot of you in the comments said, please finish it. What happened to it? I want to see it. Yes, you need to let it dry. All of these things that um, we are here addressing today in this video. So it's been about a month since that first video. This was in it. That was how much? where we're trying to recreate a very expensive West Elm side table. Um, it's been a month, it's been sitting by a radiator, which means it's nice and dried out. So we're gonna carry on. I think I'm still gonna add up the totals for this because I do wanna finish that theme of that video. Where I got stopped last time was peeling off the bark. So I'm just gonna carry on from that step. This is like the whole outer layer we wanna come off. Satisfying. <laughs> okay, so all of the large bark pieces are off, and the next step is to take a sander and sand off any remaining bits. I'm starting with a really tough grit sandpaper. This is 60, and just, just going at it to make it nice and smooth. So, the stump, we need a better word for this guy, our lovely piece of wood here has been um, sanded down nice and smooth. And yes, you can still see the different like tones of the wood, but I think that's beautiful. The very last step is gonna be to lacquer her up. Is it a her, is it a him? We don't know, we don't care. We're gonna be using this ferrothane in satin. I like satin, <laughs> listen to the podcast to hear us talk about satin finishes. I like satin because it's not too shiny. I think super glossy things can kinda actually look cheap sometimes, but it's, a little, it's durable too. More durable than matte. So, gonna be using a paintbrush, just paint on some gloss. Oh my God, it's not gloss. I just said I don't like gloss. I'm gonna be using a paintbrush to paint on this Verathane. Um, that's starting professional clear finish satin water based. Verathane lacquer, that sort. I'm gonna use a paintbrush to paint on this Verathane clear lacquer onto our nice side table boy here. <laughs> All right, so after a couple coats of the clear finish, the stump is now complete and finished. It feels actually really nice. This top is really smooth, especially with the Verathane on it. it. It looks great. It looks finished. The colors are kind of all over the place, but I guess that's what you get with natural wood, and I think it's fun. It adds character to it. So in good old fashion, that goes how much style, because that's what video this was supposed to be from. Let's total it up and see how it went. So we estimated the stump to be about $20. The can of clear coat finish was $16.50, and those are the two things we had to purchase for this, so that cost us a grand total of $35, nope. And that cost us a grand total of $36.50 to make our very own West Elm inspired wood log side table. You can tell us how we did in the comments below. Did we end up succeeding in this DIY? I think we did an awesome job at this, especially when you consider the savings that it costs us to do something close versus the very expensive original item. So I think we nailed this one. All right, on to the next fail. So for this next fail, uh, we literally didn't know is it a fail. Some of them we know are fails, others we don't. Apparently all of the comments were like, these stocking holders were not cute at all and um, maybe you should have painted them white and gold, which is hilarious because sometimes we get hate for painting too many things white and gold. So I'm gonna reattempt these stocking holders. I actually thought that they were cute and we ended up using them in a room makeover, the Christmas edition of Style Selected where we made over uh, Rachel's space for Christmas. I did end up painting them all white for that just because the vibe of her Christmas space wasn't like light pink and light green. They did get upcycled for that, but I'm gonna try this whole thing again and see if I can nail it so that um, we all feel redeemed here. 
So I'm gonna head to the thrift store and start looking for some items to help me with these stocking holders. Why are there always so many of the same things at the thrift store? I think we have to figure out a couple of options and then ask Instagram for help because this is a little overwhelming. And apparently last time I messed it up, so maybe I need help. I'm wondering what will happen with all of the Christmas stuff that they have here when Christmas is over because I feel like if it's not all sold, they're not about to store it. Like, I feel like they might just incinerate it, which is really sad, so. I need to find something. <laughs> okay, so this is pretty much turned into Instagram besides my DIY. I'm gonna ask Instagram which set they think I should upcycle. Nutcrackers, angels, or weirdly round animals, but minimalist. Okay, I just checked Instagram and it looks like the decision is to upcycle the nutcrackers, which I'm excited about. Mm -hmm. Next, I was going to replace the Nutcracker's missing limb, in addition to making him more prim. But then it dawned on me, it doesn't matter if both arms aren't swole. Even though we may be missing pieces, we are still whole. I was gonna fix his broken ankle, but then I realized... <laughs> So I have my, what is, what is this called? A, I know, but it's snowman. <laughs> True. Okay, so I have my two nutcrackers here. They're all whited out. I was about to go and add my gold accents, but then I was like, hold up, Kelsey. Should probably fix this guy's hair situation. So I have here some faux fur that we've had just around the office. So I'm gonna cut out some pieces and give this guy a cute faux fur white hair hairstyle. Hi, handsome. And while I'm at it, I'm also going to cut out some Sherpa to give our snowman here back his scarf. The bougiest with the top hat and this chunky scarf. He's a pipe, oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm actually going to use some of the old brown hair to stuff the head so that the head isn't so flat. And then I'm gonna go in with my white faux fur and just glue it to the scalp. He's so cute, I can't. <laughs> For the beard, I'm cutting out a small little piece of rectangle. And the key to cutting faux fur is to make sure that you are going underneath the hairs. You want your scissors to be as close to the back of the faux fur material as possible so that you're not chopping off the hairs. Just make sure you're weaving between the faux fur strands. So I went on and glued my beard, my hair. Maybe I should have done that. Which part are you doing? I'm gonna do the belt. Oh, maybe you should do the belt before that. <laughs> I then realized that maybe I should have done the painting first and the hair last because I had to clip the beard out of the way in order to paint my gold accent, which is the belt. And then on the snowman, I did a gold accent of the nose. Why is there a hair clip on the other guy? To keep his beard out of the way. Okay. I could just see it in the frame and I was like, what? 
So my little dudes are done and ready. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that I gave him a haircut. It's hard to cut a haircut, but I did my best. And I think the whole like Einstein crazy hair is part of the look. But now it's time for our final step, which is adding our golden stocking holder hooks. You guys may remember these from the last video. I had a couple left over. So I'm going to glue those onto the bottom of my little figurines now. And to attach them, I'm going to be using a two-part epoxy, which is the same thing I used last time to attach my stocking holders to my stocking hooks. Oop, I'm outed. <laughs> that costs how much? Actually though, I didn't realize. It's a lot. So those are my stocking holders, they got a little bit of an upgrade. I honestly was a fan of the last ones. I don't think that was a fail, but you know, what the audience wants, the audience gets. So this is my stocking holder redo. Let me know how you think I did in the comments below, or don't, if it's bad. But you can be honest, I guess, that's fine. Um, all right, on to the next fail. I know Becky's got something up her sleeve. So last up, we have what I call a self-admitted DIY fail. You guys thought this would fail for other reasons than it did, and I'm talking about my DIY platform bed. This is one of the things I'm the most proud of that we made. It was really cool. It's a wooden platform bed, and I still use it in my house today, and I still love it, but it does have a flaw, and it's not the flaw that I hit my feet on it and I whack my shins on it all the time insert the copious amounts of comments saying that I would it. I don't, it's just, it doesn't happen. It's not a problem. It just doesn't happen. But what is a problem with this bed is because I built it with a platform being around all four sides of the bed, it leaves a pretty good gap between the mattress and the wall. And this is where I lose all of our pillows. They like fall down there, they get trapped down there, and then you're trying to sleep and all of a sudden you have no pillows left because they're wedged in the gap. And I've tried to fix this by like having pillows that were like designated to be the gap pillows, but it still doesn't work. This bed really needs a headboard. And the other problem with this bed is that it wasn't designed to have a headboard, so there's no natural place to attach a headboard that sits on the ground too. So just another problem. So today we're gonna fix that fail of a DIY by creating a headboard that works perfectly for this bed. This is something I wanted to do anyways, so it's great that it fits into the theme of this video. Um, I'm gonna pop some inspo pics of the type of headboard I want to do. The reason this one will work for this bed is because it hangs down instead of being supported from the bed frame itself, which is great because like I said, there's nowhere to put a headboard on the bed as it is. So basically this headboard is just kind of two pillows that hang on a rod, very simple. To make that, I'm going to use this brown vinyl as the pillows. And the first step is gonna be drawing out all the different pieces I need to make these pillows. The idea is that they're gonna be kind of 3D rectangle pillows. So there's a front, a back, and a trim that goes all the way around. So I'm marking out all of those pieces. And the back piece is actually gonna be made out of two pieces, so there's a way to get the insert foam into these pillows. On our blog, I'm gonna list the exact, exact dimensions for all of this if you wanna follow along and make the same thing that I'm making. But if you just wanna see the journey and the process, keep watching. And while I was drawing out all the pieces onto my vinyl, I went ahead and drew out the seam allowance on all of them, which is a half inch all the way around all of the pieces. This is something you don't need to do, but it makes sewing straight lines to all your pieces so much easier. So once all my pieces are drawn out, the next step is to cut out all of the pieces. Work did shit overlap. Frick yeah. Do it a thing and it's working. And it's always a good sign. So once I have all of the pieces cut out, the ones I'm showing you here are all the pieces to make one half of this is literally just the same thing twice. So I'm only gonna show you how to make one and then you just do the whole thing again. So now that we've got all the pieces for one half laid out, it's time to start sewing it all together. So this is the front piece that's gonna be the front of the pillow and then the back is made of two pieces that will overlap and this is how we're gonna get the foam insert inside. So the two pieces need to lay together so that they make the same size as the other piece. And then the first step is gonna be sewing this little bit so they stay together to form one piece. 
Okay, let's talk about another thing you guys called us out on, and that was the fact that we didn't have a walking foot for our sewing machine. This was in our That Cost How Much episode where I was recreating a pillow from CB2, and I was trying to do the stitches through like a bunch of batting and thick fabric, and the sewing machine could not handle it. And I thought that was due to the age of our sewing machine, maybe. I had no idea that walking feet were a thing and that they were used on thicker fabrics. But you guys told me, so I'm here to fix that problem. Thank you all for informing me. We now have one for our sewing machine, which I'm gonna attempt to use today because this vinyl is pretty thick and tough. I'm hoping it will be the solution that we're looking for. So next, moving on to the two long strips that we cut out. Ideally, this would be one long strip, but I didn't wanna buy extra fabric when I didn't need to. So the first step is gonna be sewing these two pieces together to create that one long strip. Then we're gonna join that two loose ends and sew those together to create one long continuous strip, which will create the rectangle edge around the pillow to make it 3D. So now we've got that sewn together strip that's the edge. This piece, which is our two smaller pieces, joined to make one piece and then our front large piece. Cool, got it, you with me? So now it's time to put the edge onto these two pieces to make it one 3D shape. So this is really simple, you just need to lay the good sides of your fabric together and sew along the whole rectangle, joining this together. I'm glad you're with me, but before we do that, there's one more thing that we have to do, and that is make the two little strappy loops so that these pillows can be hung on a rod to be hung with the bed. So if you're following along with my diagram of the pieces to cut out, you should have these little extra bits, and those we're gonna use to create the loops. Okay, so now that the little loops have been sewn up, they should look like this, and that means we have all the pieces ready to start assembling this. So I'm starting with the back, but it doesn't matter, back or front, we have to do both eventually. We're going to add the trim all the way around to make this a 3D shape. And because pins leave permanent marks in vinyl, I'm gonna use some office clips because they work just as well as the fancy fabric clips. And just make sure that you're putting the two good sides of the vinyl together when you do this. All right, so I'm gonna go all the way around and put clips everywhere to hold it together. And lastly, don't forget to clip in the little straps. Just make sure that they're in between both layers and they are pointing inwards and not outwards. So once you've sewn all the way around all the edges, it should look like this. And now it's time to do it again with the front piece. The only thing to remember here is to fold the little loop up and make sure you're sewing it to the other side, just like we did on the first side. So again, once we've sewn around all the sides, we now have something that looks like this and it's moment of truth time where we flip it inside out and see if it worked. So that was the benefit of having the backside be out of two pieces because now it's easy to flip inside out. Okay, on to the very last step, which is stuffing this. This looks so great, especially the little loops. I'm very excited about this. So when it comes to stuffing this, you have a couple different options. You could actually just use a regular pillow if you modify the sizing to be right for a pillow, or you could use pillow stuffing. But what we're gonna do, and if you've been following along using the dimensions that I gave you, a piece of two feet by two and a half feet three inch thick foam or upholstery foam is gonna work absolutely perfect for this. So the next step is just putting it in through the slit in the back. All right, so once it's done and stuffed, it's looking like this and this looks so plush and comf. I cannot wait to get it um, hung on my bed, which speaking of next steps, that would be for us to create a whole second one, which welcome to the world of movie magic, we have completed. So you'll need two of these. The next step is just to hang it. So how to do that? I'm gonna do it with just a simple curtain rod. Um, I'll link this one below, but you can use a wooden dowel. Any curtain rod will honestly work. And I think it just makes the most sense to go hang this in the bedroom so you can see it with the bed frame, see how it fixed this fail. Um, yeah, so I'll meet you there. 
All right, welcome. Let's get to installing this. So the first step is gonna be to hang the curtain rod above the bed so that these can hang on it. Next, I'm gonna put the headboard cushions onto the rod and then put the rod into those things. Done. Check this out. There is officially no more gap at all. That is beautiful. Also just an FYI, I'm currently working on a bedroom makeover video in which I think the bedding is gonna match the new headboard a lot better. So make sure you go ahead and subscribe to this channel so you don't miss when that makeover video comes out. I am very excited for you guys to see it. Thank you guys for tuning in to this week's video. And oh my God, I forgot to mention, happy, merry Christmas Eve. Merry Christmas Eve, happy holidays. Yeah, tomorrow's Christmas. That's so exciting. Hope you guys are having a wonderful holiday season. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And we'll see you next time. <laughs> see you next year. Oh. No. Uh, Ooh. Probably not. No. <laughs> Allie. No. One more video. Yeah, make sure you guys are subscribed if you aren't already. We'd love to see you here more often, including next year. Yes. And after the holidays. Bye. Bye now.